Hey. Pop, pop. Moving, now we moving. Hey, hey. Okay, okay. Ba ba ba. Ba da ba. Ba ba da ba. Ba ba ba. Ba 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 da ba. Ba ba ba. Ba ba da ba. Anyone in a room. Can I get you home? All right, guys, I'm gonna wait. See if anybody's coming on. Let me invite people. I don't know how to invite people. Somebody up here. Hello, hello. We're we getting ready for the Poets and Pints National Poetry Streaming Set. Can you hear me? Just bring this a little closer. Hey, there we go. Hey, we got some people. Yay! Oh, it's dubstep. <laughs> Yay, we got some people, we got some people. All right, I'm going to start in about one minute. I feel like I'm glitching. Whoa. You know, I do. I do need to change the battery my smoke alarm I don't know it just never it just never I've always I've changed it and I've tried to unplug it and it goes off or it doesn't go off I don't know it's pretty annoying but anyways all right we got four people in here now it's six o'clock five people wow okay cool I am going to start the poetry reading now then so this is the poem that I started writing, or that I wrote, uh, in the winter about some mice. It's, called, it's just called mice. Let's, I don't really name my poems. I think that's kind of weird. I just, I just like writing them and then going, here, here's a poem. But if I have to, I'll call it mice. All right. There's mice in our home right now. At first, it made me think that our house has gone to shit. But no. It's a fine house we live in, and we should take care of it by dealing with this problem. I've never killed mice before. I've only seen my cats bring their bodies all mashed and mangled to our doorstep as a token. Do I have anybody to give a mouse to? I think it's weird to think about this animal like that, all sentient and feeling when I'm supposed to write them off as pests. But now that I think about it, I think we have more in common than not. They go from place to place, 
scrounging for the scraps, sniffing about, terrified they'll be found by something bigger than themselves that might want to snuff them out. The traps I've laid for them have been untouched, so I think they know more than they've let on. Perhaps they've seen their fellow vermin ensnared and snapped in a flick of a tail. And maybe if they talked, they'd say that instead of a blink of an eye, because they're mice. And I also wonder why they chose here, or if they stumbled in on an accident, to the nearest house they could find in search of a nest for the winter. Does that make me shelter? I don't mind because sometimes I think I was a chance my father never had. A do-over from all the times he couldn't ask why he had to kill something. Kill someone. Some. Many. And there are many mice here. They just look scared. They look like me on the inside, but they can't hide it like me. They aren't made like us. To go that deep. To think about anything other than survival. They're simple. I don't want to hurt them. I don't want to see their life leave their bodies, and it makes me want to weep for the poets and artists, the teachers, the gentle souls who had to go to war, who had to exterminate that which was invasive and declared a pest. They'll probably be dealt with by the time I read this, in a flick of a tail, because our house has to be taken care of, problems dealt with, and if a day ever comes where I'm the mouse, I just hope whoever takes care of me has a son and writes about me too. Bro, I'm not changing that battery, because I tried to, and it didn't work anyways. So, I can't do anything about it. So this is, I just ignore it, and now you will hear it, and it'll be part of your reality too, until you will ignore it. Hey, So that was a poem. And I decided to space out all the depressing stuff, so it's not just a wave of depression, and then like, really fun stuff at the end, so that it kind of balances itself out. Right? Yeah, now you're making me notice that more than it is. It is what it is. I try to change the battery, the alarm goes off. I try to take the alarm off, it goes off more across the whole house. It's annoying. Anyways, this one is called uh, Duluth. Your love is like a wave crashing down on a rock in Duluth. Lake Superior backsplash decorating our interiors. We've never been there together, but we feel like forever, so we will and we already have. Stomach pain wasn't the same when I met you. Weather veins turned and I free fall around your wind. Summer raindrops on closed eyes and open hearts, no way you're too far even apart. And the notes I sing seem perfectly in place. And the low down phase of tomorrow melts away. Forgetting all the people as I fall into your arms. Never want to fade. I can reach you in the dark. Obsidian visitor sitting in the shade. I know we play contrasting keys. Ivory majors complement the duality, purity. I don't think more than intuition, difference, or different. Touch as they push and pull. I know what's in the box I pray in, and you do more than me, easily. In a sense, the sleep I never got, never forgot where I put this feeling. Where I put this feeling. And the notes I sing seem perfectly in place. And the low down phase of tomorrow melts away. Mm. Getting all the people as I fall into your arms. Never want to fade when I can reach you in the dark. Can always reach you in the dark. I'll always reach you in the dark. Oh man, 
I need a new smoke detector. I like how, like, progressively as I'm doing this, I'm learning more and more about my smoke detector. It's, uh, it's pretty lit, fam. So that was called Duluth. Um, might finish that track up with my roommate. Um, put it on my album, maybe not. No, I probably will. Now that I think about it, I probably will. All right. Back to some moody shit. Excuse my language. Probably some kids watching or something. All right. This one I wrote after a night out, and it was not fun. I didn't feel like I was very powerful. It just was uh, something that I resonated with at the time. Then we'll do something silly. All right. A shadow longs to be noticed. It is forgotten like last week's leftovers tucked away in a Tupperware container. It is lonely as the moon overlooking the dark circles around the eyes of those too scared to fall asleep. It is quiet like I tried to be around my father lest I triggered the barbed wire in his throat. The war cry that paralyzed, ready to sound if that shadow could not mind its own. This friend by our side, at most if not all times, is taken for granted, abused, and abandoned. Though it speaks no language, because if it did, you would not understand it. You changed the channel or turn off the glowing box that would allow the figure to have its moment while you drifted off. And oh yes, it waits. It waits for that moment. It comes to life the minute your consciousness gives way to the night. And it becomes a river with limbs that overflow and spill unapologetically everywhere like a two-year-old with a bowl of spaghetti or finger paint. It creeps into every crevice and blends with the darkness under your bed where it sees its still siblings and weeps for them, but does not stop. No. It clashes with the walls. It flickers like a candle and feels alive because it is alive. But you will never fully see it. It was not meant for your gaze. A shadow dances for itself. And before the light swallows its freedom, I too will dance for no one. A ah yes, we should sample that smoke detector for a song because that would be fire, or it would let people know that there is fire. <laughs> so that's a, that's a poem about shadows. I thought that was really cool. Um. So yes, so I promised you something more. Fun after that, so I'll give you something. Uh, this one is called Jesus is Coming, and I don't think I've done this maybe once. I don't think I've actually done this at a live event. I'm excited to do this now. Okay, Jesus is Coming. Here we go. You know, I grew up Christian, so I think about sex a lot. There's something about the threat of a woman being stoned to death for being promiscuous that really makes me feel like they were on to something. The women, I mean. The women were onto something. Because I've sat through sermons heavily worded with synonyms, jerking each other off until the pastor closed his big book and stared into desperate grandmother's eyes until they felt his conviction burning in the back of their tight throats. I've heard the house band singing erotic fiction about God and his son touching us deeply, praying for it before sleeping, that Christ cracker telling us, eat me. Drink me. Indulge your senses until you're full of me, you little lambs. I am the shepherd with my phallic staff leading you to salvation. But be pure. Be good like me. Be wholesome for one Sunday morning a week. Now get down on your knees and beg for forgiveness for sitting and thinking about your neighbor's wife who always wears that really low-cut top, you disgusting animal, you. But you can always bring those unsavory thoughts to me until you're all clean again, though. I won't judge. In fact, I love your smut. It builds me up. Tell me and me alone. Let it off your chest. You need to be blessed. Caressed in the name of the Lord. Oh, yes. Church bells are ringing. Angels are singing. Alleluia. Sweet Mother Mary, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Oh. Jesus just came. So that's that. <laughs> and I'm glad there's not that many people in front of me. 
And maybe you thought about that and you thought, gee, Phil, that was pretty perverted. You're right. You're right. I had to write that. I had to do that. I had to do that for the church. I always have to just give give them one up, right? Just a ha, ha gotcha. Anyways, I think I will read two more because. Why not? Because it's National Poetry Month. So, uh, we'll do one more uh, sad boy one, and then one more uh, one more energetic fun one. All right. Yes, Stephen. Very erotic. Love it. Love it. Glad you guys said anything. Because if I just if if you just let me go off of that and like no one said anything after that, I would have just felt very goofy. But it's okay. It's poetry. That's what it's supposed to do. You're supposed to just be yourself. So this is like one of the first ones I wrote, and this one was inspired by Charlotte, um, who always, when I first met her, did a lot of uh, poetry. You can find her at Dear Mama Rose. Uh, check her out. I don't know if she's watching right now. Maybe not. Whatever. But um, I definitely was inspired to write because of her more so. So this one is called Cliché, and this one was published uh, online at the source they have that published there. I think there's comfort in the cliché. I feel it in my bones when she smiles a mile wide. No longer cold as ice. It's like a new lease on life. I am a safe pair of hands building a fool's paradise. I am ablaze with light and all that jazz. The apple of my eye bending backwards for you, but never bites off more than she can chew. Gives credit where credit is due, etc. until it's old news. But life is not these predictable, easily placed phrases all at once. It's more jagged, more raw, more real. Sometimes her eyes are rough, dirt, clawing at anything it can touch to pull her mouth above the surface. And she spits out her words, nouns, verbs. Sometimes she is not cold, she is nothing, and that nothing burns like frostbite. It's things like rejection that's never solidified. It breathes like a volcano eruption and stains your flesh like a memory you thought was gone until you heard their name on that cloudy winter morning surrounded by your on and off friends of three years. You know the ones that get you by. Not high, not happy, not inspired, hardly laughing. The ones that just stop to pass through like a poltergeist, moving things, saying things, and then fading out. You know, those ones. The background noise that starts overtaking the soundtrack that should be blinding ears and deafening the bitter taste of failure. The darkness that makes the skin paler. I think there's comfort in that pit in your soul. That black hole that bites instead of sucks. It grows legs and walks you like a pet that's head is low, always. It's normal to be the unwanted hallway that holds no room for visitation. A broken neon light that says, vacant. Maybe you should get that fixed. Maybe there's still time for the hanged man to change and understand these complicated conscious statements of reality. Maybe I can hold my polars on a balance beam. Maybe I open at the close, close what's open back and forth forever, and at the center is where I'll found peace. The sweet spot, a bed of roses, a flower by any other name, my own brand of cliché. That was called cliché. Hey, Shara is watching. Great. Oh, the kissy face. Love it. <laughs> yeah, so thanks for tuning in. I will probably be demoing some more songs doing some demos with Josh in my basement, some covers. We'll probably try to do a cover or something. We were messing around. And so thank you for following Poets and Pints, for checking this out. It's National Poetry Month. Support poetry if you can. Um, it's definitely important. You know, it's usually, sometimes it's put on the back burner online uh, next to maybe music or visual art, and it's not as accessible, but I think that it's a very important part of art and I love it. I love people's perspectives. I love how people grow. I love how people look at their life and compact them into words and just give us who they really are. That's what poetry is all about. Uh, so this is my last poem. And then I got some exciting news for you. So this one is called Enough. 
When my overzealous adrenaline pumping pistons are on overdrive, it's hard for everyone else to see why sometimes. It's unfathomable that someone of my age hasn't been totally crushed by the day in, day out, 9 to 5, 7 to 3, 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. clock overlord, now commonly known as a cell phone. They say, Phil, sit down, you're making me anxious. Phil, stop tapping the table. Phil, I just can't match your energy right now. You need to calm down. Phil, you're too much. I love you, but with a big underline underneath that word, but. And usually, I'm not listening, so half the time I don't hear it. I go to another room, I check my phone, my email, I derail conversations with my odd contemplations like, wow. I bet if I said something really spicy on my Twitter right now, DanDad168 will tell me I'm canceled, and I won't give a shit, because he's a hedge fund, he's a hedge fund manager. What the fuck does he know about people my age? He could afford groceries, gas, and not giving a second thought to global warming. Anyways, I'm derailing, so sorry if I'm failing to get to the point. When I do hear people tell me I'm too much, my breath skips a beat. My soul crumples like aluminum sheets. I want to say sorry too soon. I always aim to please just as much as I want to be myself. But today I had a courageous thought. I don't need a gray color palette to paint the sky with every time I open my eyelids. I don't need to sit still because everyone loves to sit until their ass cheeks look like a cottage cheese bologna hybrid. I'm not too much. You're not enough. And I swear to God, if I go to another concert filled with unmoving, unfeeling zombies, I'm going to scream as loud as I can at every person in the room until they open this fucking pit up. Because I'm electric, and I will not be sorry. I am unbound waves of energy pulsating. I am lightning, you goddamned incandescent light bulb of a person. I am not meant to sit and look perfect. So the next time you want to question my existence, here's a suggestion. You need to stand up. You're not stimulating me enough. Make some noise instead of hiding in your comfortable silence for once in your life. Be too much. All right. So that, open the pit, yes, that is my last reading of the day. And I have some exciting news. I am dropping my new single from my album uh, called Breathe on Sunday. It's going to be available on Spotify and other streaming platforms. So on Sunday, I want everybody, if you can, about about afternoon, it'll drop around 11 or noon, to um, get on Spotify, uh, share the track. I'm going to start sharing the track. Um... I am just going to be very ecstatic to share this new music. It's from my forthcoming album. And then I will have more music, other adventure music, music adventures, that um, I will be having that include my roommate and I. We have a project in the works. Um, so I'm super excited for that. So thank you, Tony Placido, for bugging me. Uh, to come on this uh, and just be myself. I really liked it. Um, thank you to everyone for tuning in. And yeah, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. This Saturday. No, it's on Sunday. Sunday, May 3rd. Breathe. It's coming out. I want y'all to share it. I want y'all to stream it. And I will probably do some more poetry eventually. So... Thank you for thank you for tuning in. I love you all. Remember to breathe and remember to take care of yourselves and express who you really are because who you are is really important at the end of the day. Okay? Don't be afraid to be you. Love you. Peace.